Welcome to the Inquisitive Engineer. I've posted a few videos on the Titan Submersible. I have put links in the description below. There have been some questions on why the Titanic did not implode like the Titan Submersible. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the physics behind why the Titanic did not implode like the Titan Submersible. And also potentially if there were some air pockets captured in the Titanic, what would have happened? So first off, the Titan Submersible was a round cylindrical pressure vessel. And if we go ahead and look at the cross section, when people are loaded inside of it at sea level, it is filled with atmospheric pressure, which is equal to about 14.7 PSI or one atmosphere. Now, as it dives down into the ocean, the deeper and deeper it goes, the water pressure pushing in on the outside of the pressure vessel continues to go up until you're down to the depth of the Titanic where the water pressure is around 5,400 PSI or about 367 atmospheres. This creates a massive imbalance of pressure on the Titan submersible's hull where the water pressure outside is much greater than the atmospheric air pressure on the inside and the only way for the hull to hold back all the water pressure is to be structurally sound itself. As we all know, the Titanic hit an iceberg and started taking on water, so the rooms under water level started getting flooded with water. And as it took on more and more water, it sat lower and lower and lower in the ocean, and eventually it took on enough water where it was no longer buoyant and it started to sink. As you can see in this cross section of the Titanic, it is broken down into separate rooms. If we simplify that cross section of the Titanic into this simple crude drawing, the water pressure is equal in all directions, both inside and outside of the sinking Titanic. And therefore, the water pressure pushing from the outside of the hull squeezing it inward is canceled out by the water pressure on the inside of the ship pushing outward. And because those two forces are equal, this is why there is no net imbalance of force that is squeezing and compressing and going to implode the Titanic. Now, what happens if, as the ship was sinking, water got into a certain room and it got above the doors into the ceiling and it trapped a pocket of air? You may have seen the ideal gas law in high school physics class where pressure times volume equals NRT, where N is the amount of air, R is a constant value, and T would be temperature. So if a pocket of air got trapped in the Titanic, N, the amount of air, isn't going to change because that pocket of air still has the same amount of air as when it was at the surface. R is also not going to change. That is a constant value. And temperature isn't going to change all that much. So the right-hand side of the equation is going to be fairly constant. Because the right side of the equation is going to stay fairly constant, as the pressure goes up as the Titanic sinks, the volume of the pocket of air must go down. Now, this trapped pocket of air is not going to cause an implosion because it is equally forcing back on the water and, say, the ceiling of the room that it is trapped in and there's water on top of that room pushing back down on the bubble of air. As the Titanic sank further and further into the depths of the ocean and the water pressure went up, that volume of air that was trapped is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now what happens if, say, there was a room in the Titanic that had sealed doors and water was not able to leak in it before it sank? In that example, that now becomes a pressure vessel like the Titan Submersible, where you have atmospheric air pressure and the water pressure as it dives is going to be greater and greater and greater. And eventually that particular closed room on the Titanic would have an implosion just like the Titan Submersible. So there you have it. A little bit of simple physics explains why the Titanic did not implode like the Titan Submersible. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And as always, stay curious.